Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will take a look on the Next.js image component. So whenever you are using images, you should use the image component because it offers so many good features and extensions to the actual HTML EMG tag. Some of these benefits are, for example, the size optimization, which means that Next.js will automatically serve correctly sized images for each device using modern image formats like WebP and AVIF. Then we have the visual stability, which means that image component prevents layout shift automatically when images are loading. Then we also get faster page loads because images are only loaded when they enter the viewport. Then we also have the asset flexibility because Next.js resizes images on demand, even if the images are stored on remote servers. So it's safe to say that the image component is something you should use in your Next.js application. So today we'll take a look on how to properly display images using first local images and then also with remote images, even if you don't know the width or height of the images. And there are some differences in the configurations we need to do between these two options. After this video, you will be able to confidently use the image component and know you are utilizing it fully to improve your application performance and user experience. I also created a cheat sheet for using the image component. So you can use it as a quick reference when working with the image component. The link is down in the description. But now let's open up our VS code and let's get started. Okay, so here I have a fresh Next.js project open and all I did here so far was just to clean up the page file so we get the hello world text in it. So let's start by adding images from a local path with the path import and then the static import. So what I'm going to do first is just erase this text and add a header here like this. So let's see first how to add an image from a path string. And up here I have already imported my image component from next image. And then let's type in image and the image we want to add here is actually in my public folder over here called this rubber duck sunglasses JPEG. So let's add that. And since it's in the public folder, we can access it with slash and then the file name like this. And let's actually close the image tag and save this and see what happens. So I'm going to save it, switch to the browser. And we can see we get an error saying that we are missing a required width property. So with next image, the width and height properties are required. So let's add those. So I'm going to add width and let's put it 100 and then height will be 75 like this. Okay, like this. Okay, so now let's save it, see what happens. Looks like we are getting an image displayed over here. If you refresh the page, we can see the duck image over there. Okay, that's good. But we can see we are still getting an error over here. So it says the alt is missing. So let's just add that too. So we get rid of the errors like this. So now we don't have any errors and our image is displayed. That's good. But one thing I want to point out here right away is that the width and height properties, they are required with next image. And it's super important to have the same aspect ratio over here that we have with the image. So let's say our image was uh, 800 pixels of width and 600 pixels of height. So right now our aspect ratio here is four to three. And actually this rubber duck image has these dimensions. So it's important to have the same aspect ratio. So if we wanted to say that this image needs to be width of 200, then we would need to change this height also in the same ratio. So this would be 150. So if we save this, we can see that the image looks good. But now if we change to 200, so it would be one to one. Let's save it and refresh the page. We can still see that the image looks good. So what we can tell based on this is that the uh, width and height of the image doesn't actually affect the rendering of the image in a way. Uh, and let me explain a little bit. So let's say I added a text here like this. It shows up under here. And now since we have this uh, aspect ratio wrong, so this is one to one. And let's see what happens. I'm going to add a little bit of trolling 
to our page. So let's say slow 4G. And now if I refresh the page, see what happens. Did you see that? The space reserved for this image was higher. And once the image was uh, downloaded and rendered, it took only the height of 150 over here. So let me do it again. You can see this text over here jumping up and down. Like that. So the width and height of the image component in Next.js tells to the browser how much space it should reserve for the image. And once the image is downloaded, it is rendered based on the width. So if the aspect ratio is wrong, it will cause this layout shift over here, what we just witnessed. So that's why it's important to have the correct aspect ratio for your images. So let's add the 150 here. So now the aspect ratio is correct for this. Save it and let me refresh the page and let's see if the layout shift still happens. Okay, so we can see that it downloaded the image and it reserved the right amount of space for that image. Okay, so now let's see how to add the same image with a static import. So I'm going to add a heading here again, like this. So now let's add the image component. And for the SRC right now, we don't want to pass in the path for the image, but rather a static import. And what that means is that we need to import that image up here. So let's do that like this. So you are importing the image like you would any other component, for example. And now as a SRC prop, we can provide the duck image like this. Let's add an alt like this and close the image tag. Now let's save and let's see what happens. So I'm going to switch the browser and looks like we get our image displayed. So if you noticed here, we didn't need to define the width or height properties. And that is because we are importing the image up here. So Next.js can read and it knows the dimensions of that image. So it can right away reserve the correct amount of space for that image. So now if we wanted to make it a little bit smaller, so let's say we want to make it a width of 100, we can just add the width property over here like this, save it. Let's see what happens. Looks like it's displayed in a smaller size. And again, we don't need to now define the height property because Next.js can read the dimensions of the image. And then when we set the width of the image, it can automatically calculate what the height should be or what kind of space it should reserve for that uh, image size. So let me just demonstrate it. So if we add the text below the image and save it, now, if I refresh the page, you can see there is no layout shift because Next.js can automatically reserve the correct amount of space for that image. One other thing that we can easily do with the uh, statically imported images is to add this placeholder blur. We can do it with this kind of import also, but it's super easy to do with the static imports. All we have to do is set the placeholder and set it to blur like this. So now if we save this, switch to the browser and let's refresh the page and see what happens with this image. It went quite quickly. Let me add some more throttling. Let's refresh again. Okay, there you saw it. So while the image is downloading, it will automatically show this blurred image indicating for the user that this image is downloading and there should be this kind of image. So next says automatically gets the blurred image for this uh, duck image when we have imported it like this. If we wanted to use this blur option with the uh, path import, we would have to define the blur data URL ourselves uh, because Next.js can't read the image and then make the blurred image from it if it's not imported statically. Okay, and one thing I want to show you in the dev tools. So now if I refresh the page, we can see we are getting three kind of images. So here the URL for the image is from the slash underscore next slash static and so on. So what happens here is that Next.js actually automatically 
uh, provides us with the correct size of the image and it automatically optimizes the images so it doesn't just download the original full image over here and then just resize it because that would be bad if we have uh, like a two megabyte size of image and then we wanted to just display it as 100 pixels times 100 pixels. So it's not good to use the original image for that kind of small image. So next test automatically creates a smaller version of it that we can use for the smaller image size. And we can see right here, one of the images is 1.1 kilobytes and one is 2.1 and one is 4.9. So basically you don't have to worry about resizing your images to the correct size for different use cases, but you can just have a one image and import it wherever you want. And the image component will take care of optimizing it for you automatically. Okay, so now let's see how to add images from a remote location. So basically with an URL from another server. So let me just add a heading over here again like this and then add the image. And for the source, I'm going to use this URL. So this is a URL that we can get an image from. It is generated. So this is the image we will get. And uh, then let's add the alt text like this and close the image tag, save it and see what happens. So again, we are getting an error that we are missing the width property. And here we need to define the width because again, we are not statically importing this image and next says, doesn't know the width or height of the image before it has downloaded it. So we need to define it here. So Next.js knows how much space to reserve for that image. So let's add the width of 150 like this. And same with height, we need the height and the height will be also 150 because if we open up the image once more, we can see it's a square. So the aspect ratio is one to one. Okay. Now let's save this, switch to the browser, and we can see we get an other error. So it's saying that the hostname needs to be configured under images in our Next.js config.js. So we need to tell Next.js from which addresses uh, it's allowed to import images from. So let's do that. Open up the Next.js config, and inside of the config, we will add the following configuration like this. So inside the images and remote patterns, we are setting all the URLs we want to allow images to be imported. So in this case, we are setting the protocol host name, port and path name. And when we set the path name like this, it is allowed to import any images from this domain. But if you are using some CDN or Azure WAS or something like that, and you have a folder for your images, add it here because it's not the best practice to allow all of the images to be imported from a certain domain. But for this demonstration purposes, and since our URL looks like this, so we are just generating the image right here, we are not adding any path names. But if you have a folder that you can add there, do it because it's much more secure. But now let's save this and refresh our page and see if it works out. Okay, so looks like we are getting our image displayed over here and it looks good. So it's 150 width and high. So in this case, we knew the size of the image, but of course there are situations when we don't know the size of the image, but we still need to add it to the uh, web page. So let's see how to handle those cases now. So what I'm gonna do is again, add a heading here like this, and then let's add a p tag and inside of that our image. So I'm gonna use the image and src is the same as before and let's an add an alt. And now since we don't know the width and height of the image, what we can do is add the fill parameter. And let's close the image tag and save it and see what it looks like now. Okay, so now we can see that the image is filling up the whole web page and that's not what we want. Okay, so what the fill property does it fills up the uh, whole space of the parent element. So in order for us to display the image correctly, we need to define some configurations for the parent element of this image component. And in this case, it's the uh, P tag. And these properties are just uh, CSS properties. So I'm gonna add style. And the first one we need to define is the position of the element. And I'm gonna set it to relative like this and then I want to define the width of the image. 
And in this case, I'm going to set it with CSS over here. So I'm saying that the width should be 400 pixels like this. And then I'm going to say that I want this to be also height of 200 pixels like this. So let's save this and see what it looks like in the browser. Okay, so our image is down here and we can see that it takes 400 of width and 200 of height. But the aspect ratio is now a little bit wrong because you remember this image had the aspect ratio of one to one. But now since we defined the height of 200 and width of 400, the aspect ratio is two to one with those dimensions. And this is not what we want. But again, let's assume that we don't know the dimensions of the image that we are displaying. So the solution for this is to use something called object fit. So let me change back to the VS code. And for the image component, I'm going to add a style prop and define an object fit and set it to contain like this. So now let's save this, switch to the browser, and we can see that the image looks good now. But as you can see, there is this big white space on the left hand side of the image. And that is because our container, the P element, is still width of 400. But since the height is 200, it and we are using the fit and object fit contain, the image is displayed as a height of 200 and width of 200 because the aspect ratio was one to one. Let me demonstrate this by adding the good old border for our container like this and uh, save it. And now you can see that the image is just horizontally aligned to the center of the container. So let's say now that we wanted to make this a little bit smaller image. So let's say we wanted it to take just the 200 pixels of width and 100 pixels of height. So now let's save it. And now we can see that the container of the image is smaller and so is the image inside of it also. And let me add some text below the image right here and let's test the layout shift again. So now I'm going to add a little bit of throttling and let's refresh the page. And we can see there is no layout shift because the Next.js knows how much space to reserve for this image before the image is downloaded. So this was kind of the explanation of how the image component works in Next.js. Again, I made a cheat sheet for the image component that you can download from the link in the description. So you can reference that when you are using the image component. And for me, it has been a great help because I don't always remember all of this, but when I open up the cheat sheet, I can right away see uh, what I need and then get my job done faster. But I truly hope you found this video at least somewhat helpful and maybe learned a thing or two about the Next.js image component. And if you did, please leave a like below and subscribe to the channel for more Next.js content.